Hello folks! Congratulations on your selection to the Southern Area Engine Academy. This video will serve as a primer to the hydraulics portion of the course. Hydraulics can seem intimidating and complicated, but we are going to take some of the mystique away. Lucky for you, your agency has provided you a cheat sheet to keep you from looking dumb on the fire line. Your handy dandy IRPG. So let's begin. To start off with, we see that our formula is PDP, which is pump discharge pressure, equals the nozzle pressure of the nozzle plus the friction loss of the hose lay, and then plus or minus the head pressure. And we'll explain why each one of these elements is important. So the first part of the equation is NP, or nozzle pressure. Nozzle pressure is important simply because that's what we need at the end of the hose lay. That's the goal. We want to deliver the right amount of pressure to the nozzle at the end of the line. And delivering the right amount of pressure leads to happy firefighters. And we want happy firefighters. There's two basic rules of thumb here that are pretty easy to follow. We are pretty much going to be running either a Forrester nozzle or an adjustable barrel. If we look in our IRPG, we see that the Foresters are run at an operating pressure of 50 PSI and the adjustable barrels are run at an operating pressure of 100 PSI. This is pretty well our first give me in the equation. The next piece of the equation is friction loss. This is the part that scares most people. But we really only need two pieces of information to determine the amount of friction loss we're going to have. First is the amount of flow that we're trying to get through the hose lay, the amount of water that needs to get out the other side. Next is the hose diameter, the size of the hose that we are trying to push the water through. And it's a pretty simple concept. The more water you try to put through a small hole, the more friction there's going to be and the more resistance. And so we'll show you how to get those numbers out of your book and I'll show you how to keep your brains from getting scrambled when you're calculating the friction loss for these hose lays. So here's our problem. We have 300 feet of inch and a half trunk line, a lateral with 100 feet of one inch, supplying a one inch adjustable barrel. Past that we have another 100 foot of inch and a half trunk line, which is supplying a second lateral that's 200 feet, which also has a one inch adjustable barrel. And we talked about the two things we need to know to determine friction loss, or one, the GPM going through the hose, the amount of flow, and then the diameter of the hose that that water's flowing through. So I'm just going to work this problem out and then we'll go over the rules of thumb afterwards. So if we go to our RPG, we see that a one inch adjustable barrel has a flow of 20 GPM. We always work backwards, so if I start with my first lateral here, and I always, this will help keep your brains from getting scrambled, just always write out the, write out the number so you can visualize it. So our first lateral, we have 200 feet of one inch hose at 20 GPM. We go to our IRPG and we see that one inch hose at 20 GPM loses 10 PSI per section. So for 200 feet, we're losing 20 PSI in friction at that lateral. If we work backwards, we go to our next section of trunk, which we'll call trunk two since it's the second piece. From the IRPG we see that inch and a half hose at 20 GPM is only losing one PSI of friction loss per section. So that being 100 feet, that's one PSI. Now when we go to trunk one, this portion, we see that trunk one has to, to supply both these nozzles. So that's 40 GPM total. 40 gallons per minute. So if we go to the RPG, we see that inch and a half hose at 30 GPM loses three, but we're above that. So for the sakes of this, we're gonna to go to the worst case. So we bump it up to 60 GPM, and we see that we're losing 13 PSI per section of inch and a half. So for trunk one, we have 300 feet, three sections at 13 PSI, totaling 39 PSI of friction loss for trunk one. So our total friction loss for the hose lay equals 
20 plus 1 plus 39 or 60 psi of friction loss. I'm sure at this point you have some questions. So we'll cover the rules of thumb. So I'm sure the first question that many of you had is, why did we only do this one lateral? What about this guy over here? That's where we get to our first rule of thumb. We only determine the friction loss for the worst case lateral only. So the worst case lateral is determined by which one of these lateral lines has the highest demand. Sometimes that's the longest lateral, sometimes it's because it has a, a higher GPM nozzle or it needs to operate at a higher um, nozzle pressure. You find all that information in your IRPG. Um, the second rule of thumb is that the flow for each piece of hose is determined by the nozzles that are beyond that section of hose. So as I worked backwards, we saw that this lateral is supplying 20 GPM here. This section of trunk also is only supplying that one nozzle at 20 GPM. But trunk one here, this 300 feet, has to supply both nozzles at 40 GPM. So those are the numbers that are used to determine the friction loss there. Uh, the third rule of thumb is to always work the problem backwards. So you saw as we went by, we determined this lateral first, um, and we decided that a one inch hose at 20 GPM is losing 10 PSI of friction per section. So for that lateral, we had 20 PSI. As we go here to trunk two, we see that an inch and a half hose at 20 GPM is losing one PSI per section. Now as we backed up to here, we saw that inch and a half at 40 GPM, we don't really have a number for 40 in there. It jumps from 30 to 60. So we went to the worst case. We did 13 GPM. Now in the real world, you're going to pick a nice in-between number. So 40 lands nice in the middle between 30 and 60 GPM. You might use 6 or 7 or break out a calculator and, and figure out exactly how far the gap is. Uh, for the sakes of the class, so everybody's on the same page and we're grading to the same scale, we always bump to the worst case. That way everybody's coming to the same number. So for this instance, we went, because we were above 30 gallons per minute, we went to 60 GPM, which is 13 PSI per section of inch and a half. So for trunk one, that brought us to 39 GPM. So that gives us our friction loss for this hose leg. This is the FL component of the equation. So at this point, we've determined our nozzle pressure. We've calculated our friction loss for the hose lay. The only thing that's left is this little guy right here, HP, for head pressure. Now our rule of thumb for head pressure is that we're going to add or subtract one PSI for every two feet of elevation change. So if we're pumping water uphill, let's say this line goes 50 feet uphill, we're going to have to add 25 pounds of pressure to counteract the effect of gravity wanting to pull that water back downhill. Now, the opposite is true if this is 50 foot downhill. We'd have to subtract it from the pump discharge pressure because it would be gaining that pressure as it worked downhill. So at this point, we have all three pieces of the equation and all we have to do is put them together. We determine that our formula, pump discharge pressure equals nozzle pressure plus friction loss plus head pressure. So we determined that our nozzle pressure equaled 100 PSI for a one inch adjustable barrel. Both of the barrel nozzles are gonna be 100 PSI. The next part of the equation is the friction loss. So we're gonna add 60 pounds of pressure for the friction loss of the hose leg, which we came to using our rules of thumb in the RRPG. The last piece is head pressure which we determined was going to add an additional 25 pounds of pressure because we're pumping 50 feet up the hill. So we're going to add 25. Now as you write this out, what messes a lot of people up is if it's going downhill, they'll, for they'll forget to put a minus sign here. But just remember, we're adding all this together. So our pump discharge pressure is 100 plus 60 plus 25. 
or 185 PSI that we're going to pump at our truck to ensure that we have happy firefighters at the end of our hose lay. And it's just that easy. That's the pump to start discharge pressure that we need to put. Pressure? Good.